Grand Theft Auto 4. I've got hundreds of hours in this one, and I've 100 percented it too. I've seen many things that most people would never see in a normal playthrough, so there's a lot good and bad that I've never seen anyone else mention in a review before. One thing I've never heard mentioned in a review is just how good the opening is. Roman is a good guy stuck at the bottom rung of the societal ladder. At the start of the game, he's being picked on by just about everyone. Introducing Nico into that situation is such a cool dynamic. Here's a guy who can't stand up for himself, being harassed, bullied, extorted by everyone in town, when suddenly his battle-hardened cousin, who's killed half of Serbia, a guy who probably fucking loves a good war crime, shows up on his side. Vlad is the perfect villain for this situation because he preys on those at the bottom of the food chain, and you experience being at the bottom of the food chain by working and living with Roman. Roman makes it very clear how hard he worked for the little he has. Vlad bullying Roman is then paralleled by Nico bullying other Romans being people fresh off the boat, for Vlad. You and Roman might not be at the bottom of the food chain anymore, but you're still a part of it. This beginning is also perfect to enforce a sense of progression as you go through the game. You start with nothing. In GTA 4, you start off with a shitty apartment, cockroaches everywhere, Roman lives in it, for Christ's sake. I also love the claustrophobic nature of the first island and where Roman lives. There's people fucking everywhere, cars fucking everywhere, you live under a bridge like some troll. The opening section with Vlad is undeniably the strongest part of the entire game. Unfortunately, the rest of the game doesn't even come close to living up to this. These are all saves that I've 100%ed. So, the main game I've 100%ed, both the DLCs I've 100%ed. But at the very bottom you'll see, I've got one save in Hove Beach at the very start, just because it's my favourite part of the game. It's my- I love it so much. I injured my friend. He dies. <laughs> How did I injure my friend? This is my fault. I can't fucking swim. The American dream is something alluded to frequently within this game. I think the juxtaposition between Roman and Nico's attitudes towards it are great reflections of the characters themselves. Nico is a miserable bastard. He doesn't believe in the American dream at all. Roman, however, despite growing up very similarly to Nico and having many of the same reasons to be just as pessimistic as Nico, he's not. As miserable as Nico, I mean. And even despite experiencing the worst America has to offer through Vlad, the Russians, the Lone Sharks, Nico, <laughs> he still believes in the dream, no matter what. Even after being kidnapped, even after being shot, he still believes in it completely. He believes he can make a future for himself and through that belief, if you pick the right ending, actually does. Roman's motivation is building a future, Nico's motivation is revenge for the past. Nico's motivation behind everything he does is very clear. It does get lost behind a bunch of just weirdo missions where you're like hanging out with gangsters and at one point Nico becomes a social worker for some fucking reason, but the underlying I want revenge for my friend's deaths is still there. It just gets a bit lost. It really does feel like the story kind of disappears for a while, then you meet Bernie, then it disappears again, and then, as you near the ending, suddenly it reappears. But it's a huge stretch of the game where you're just meeting characters and just doing missions, and Nico might every so often mention, oh, I'm looking for someone, by the way. But really, it takes a backseat very strongly. There's no, like, strong narrative, like, at, at the very start with Vlad, right until the very end. There is some smaller stories, like the diamonds and the Gracie kidnapping, but you don't really give a shit. There's nothing on the level of... Roman at the very start. So yeah, the story has its moments, but I think the big appeal of this game is learning about Nico. It's quite impressive how such a miserable, pessimistic sociopath can be so likeable. Everyone who plays the game loves the guy. Contrasting Nico's background with everyone around him in the city is always really interesting. I stopped counting birthdays when I saw my friends die back home. I didn't think I deserved any more when they weren't getting any. Let me let you in on a little secret, NB. Sure, as long as it doesn't involve what you really get up to in the gym. You want to learn something or you want to make fun? Make fun. Also, given Nico's background, it gives him the perfect excuse for him to be a bit of a psychopath. The player wants to run over civilians. Well, it's not a stretch to say Nico might want to do that too, you know? Nico having a bad day? I don't think this is much of a stretch to say, yeah, he's going to be driving on the pavement. There is a bit of a disconnect when it comes to the gameplay. Like, during one of the first missions, after you kill someone, Nico goes, Ah! I promised myself I wouldn't kill people here! 
But by this point, I'd killed so many civilians. I'd shot a bunch of cops. I killed at least one hot dog guy. His body count was up there, you know? But Nico still has an incredibly appropriate background to be a rock star protagonist, in my opinion. So when the overarching narrative begins to fade, you still have this brilliant character to enjoy as he interacts with people. This is just damage control, though because it would have absolutely been possible to have both Nico being an amazing character and some actually interesting stories. Because a lot of this game as it is, is Nico being introduced to some characters, killing some people for those characters, and then those characters randomly deciding to kill each other for no fucking reason, with you as Nico doing the killing. This repeats like three or four times until the ending. Playboy, McCreary's, the Italians, it happens again and again and again. And once you notice that, you're like, hang on a minute, what the fuck is happening here? One thing I love about this game is how much love they put into the world itself. Even when NPCs are set to off, it still feels lived in, like people were here. Where people exist, there is garbage, there is shit. There's like sofas around and boxes and all kinds of stuff. So not only does it make the world feel real, it's also fun to drive into. They put so much effort into having NPCs walk around with items and objects, many of which you can interact with yourself. When you drive into someone, there's often so much shit happening on screen that it can be hard to appreciate until you actually slow it down. The sheer amount of time, effort and resources they must have put into NPCs and NPC interactions because they know how important they are to making the world feel real is genuinely so impressive. A really good example is the sheer amount of NPC voice lines in this game. Watching the end credits scroll and just seeing the list of all the people who voiced NPCs in this game never fucking end. It makes you realise just how much effort went into this game and it went into those little interactions. I've played GTA 4 fucking countless times and I still frequently hear voice lines I have never heard before. Also, a lot of the voice lines are actually funny. The missions can be repetitive, but thankfully you are given the freedom to approach them in multiple ways. You don't just fail immediately the second you step one foot out of line. You could just walk in and shoot everyone for every mission, or you could do something actually interesting like take a helicopter and find a vantage point to snipe from. Um, some missions you can just call the police and have the police fight them. You can call Dwayne for backup gangsters and do drive-bys. You can call Packy for a car bomb and then launch your car at them jump out and then explode it. I think there's a lot more freedom in this game than people realize. It is generally up to you, but that said, without prior knowledge of how each mission's gonna play out, it is usually best to just do it the normal way, which makes first playthroughs a little bit worse, I think. One thing a lot of people complain about in this game is the lack of checkpoints during missions. I don't mind the lack of checkpoints. When you fuck up, there should be some consequence to that. And that consequence being you have to replay the start. And there, finally, is the end of the NPC voice credits. Meanwhile, in Skyrim, you've got four voice actors for the whole fucking game. I also think it speaks to the freedom present in each mission. In GTA V, if you had to restart from the very beginning on each mission, that would be fucked. Everyone would hate the game because they fail you at every fucking turn. Oh, Franklin was spooked. I don't give a fuck. If I'm here to kill someone, why do I care if they're spooked? I don't care about their mental disposition. Oh, he's a bit sad now. Why do I give a fuck? Unless you die or your target escapes, it's actually kind of hard to fail in GTA 4. And missions really aren't that long either. The longest mission in the game, the final mission, actually has a checkpoint too. Which means in GTA 4, when you fail a mission, you're gutted. Because fuck, I have to do this shit again. But then when you actually complete a mission, there is a feeling of accomplishment, because you adapt and improve. The first playthrough of this game can be extremely hard, but after a while you know exactly what to do. Speaking of the final mission, a lot of the time when I see people try and play the game, they get to the final mission and they struggle. I've seen two people, they play the entire game, they get to the final mission and they don't even bother finishing it because it's, it is very hard, I will admit. I think it would have been the perfect opportunity to have some of the relationships in the game come through. It's time to call in some favours, you know? All that bowling has not been for nothing. Dwayne would send in gangsters, Packy would send in his brothers and, you know, give you explosives and all that. Uh, Brucey would do something in a helicopter, Jacob would give you guns. Uh, Roman would be fucking useless, but he'd show up, and it would bring everything full circle. It's no longer just you and Roman against the world, and it would just make the final mission that little bit easier if you need it. Nico! Why do we keep meeting like this? Because you're the best looking internet. <laughs> Nico fucked it up. 
<laughs> he fucked up his res. The cars in this game, I love them. People don't like them because you actually have to slow down around corners. But in my opinion, that's not a bad thing at all. Driving actually takes some practice. Each car has a different feel. Um, some cars I fucking hate. Some cars I absolutely love. The Blister Compact is the nicest car to drive. It's so easy. The best cars to learn how to drive are the cop cars. They're fast, they're responsive, and they're always accessible. But cars take a level of skill and practice to drive. Surely in a game about driving, that's a good thing. You actually have to practice using them a little bit. It's not just like your fucking six-year-old daughter could pick up a controller and play easily. It's a game for fucking adults. Surely some complexity, some, you know, isn't a bad thing there. You might not enjoy the specific way it was implemented, which I think is fair, but probably you can still appreciate that having driving be a skill you can practice in a driving game is probably a good thing, right? That's not to say you can't get better at driving in the other games, I'm just saying this game has a lot more to it. The more realism-oriented approach to driving means there's no arcadey mid-air controls. If you flip a car, you're gonna have to get another car and fucking unflip it, you know? Which is something I really like. I like that more realistic feel. If I'm in a police chase and I end up on my hood, shit, I gotta get out, I gotta fucking run. That happens in real life all the fucking time. It encourages you to drive a bit slower, drive a bit more carefully, but then when the police are on you and you have to drive fast, now getting away from them actually becomes a challenge and actually becomes a bit of an accomplishment. It makes it way more impressive, it makes it way better in my opinion. I'm comparing it with GTA 5 in my head again. That is to say the driving isn't bad, it's just different. It's like when a website changes its layout, YouTube, Twitter, it doesn't matter, and everyone promises, I'm never using this shit again. You always see people, I'm, ne I'm uninstalling it now. And then a week later, if you were to revert it, they'd hate it because they're used to it, you know? It's a bit like that. Once you get used to it, it's fine. I will say on PC, if you play at an FPS higher than 60, it will fuck up the physics, at least for the bikes. The cars kind of feel the same, but the bikes are fucked on high frame rates. Nicky, we're fucking upside down. We look like gimps. It's part of the legal. So for the non-car gameplay, Rockstar made hurting people very fun. When someone gets shot, they'll take a few steps back, they'll put their hand over their wound. If there happens to be objects nearby in the environment, they will interact with them as they fall. They react in a very realistic way. They don't just flop over with no self-preservation at all. All this happens within mere seconds of gameplay, and again can be very hard to actually appreciate until you slow it down. People often refer to this game's physics as ragdoll physics, but to me that's an insult to their complexity. Characters will react realistically to the specific situations they're in. For an example, if you jump off a bike, you'll try and protect your body, and you can see your character react every time you hit the ground again. That's so much more complicated than just ragdolling. Now when a character dies, they lose their sense of self-preservation and then become a ragdoll. When I first played this game, I was used to Vice City. I was used to this. So going from that straight to this blew my fucking mind. That said, moving Nico around tight environments can be very counterintuitive. And sometimes taking cover will launch you right into your enemies. You can get used to it. I have. But just because you can get used to something doesn't mean it's good. I'd probably get used to the taste of paint if I drank it every day, but I'm not going to add it to my cereal again anytime soon. Fist fighting is also something they knew a lot of players would want to do, and so they put a lot of effort into. The NPCs have two different styles. They have, like, a, a good fighter style and, like, a shit fighter style. Most women in the game are the shit variety, but you do get some bad bitches that will just beat the shit out of you. They're rare, but they do exist. Another cool thing about the not-in-car gameplay is the parkour. In GTA 4, you could parkour. It was really fucking cool. I missed the parkour a lot in GTA 5. It was also cool just for police chasers. Sometimes you'd be running from the cops, you'd go down some alleyway, and oh shit, I can do something cool here. I can do some wacky shit and get away. There's quite a strange mix of there's nothing to fucking do and wow, you can do so much. So for an example, there's no properties. There's no cool rewards for killing all the pigeons. There's nothing to spend your money on aside from the fucking car wash. But then there's also a ridiculous amount of enterable buildings. And when I say enterable, I don't mean big fat fucking loading screen before you can even get in. I mean you can just walk in whenever you want. No loading screen. You can pull out your gun whenever you want. There's no big restrictions. So much of what I love about this game is also very unique to this game. The parkour, the fighting, the car physics, the people physics, the guns, the interiors, the NPCs, the garbage, the abilities, the story, the characters, the city, the music, the setting, and the fun gimmicky things like tailless helicopter piloting or swimming pool jumping. 
all make this game unlike any other GTA to play. A lot of people have a lot of critiques with this one, and mate, a lot of them are valid, but for me, I love this fucking game. The driving is hard, the story is depressing, there's no checkpoints, controlling Nico can be annoying, and I'm sure there's a ton of other things that chase people away. By putting so much emphasis on the small things, Rockstar wanted this world to speak for itself, but unfortunately, a lot of people weren't fucking listening. A lot of this game's value is very difficult to appreciate until you've spent a ton of time within its world. That value isn't very accessible. Accessibility is a very smart thing to prioritize. It gives your game a wide appeal, it increases sales. Rockstar know this, and that is why I am certain there will never be another GTA like 4.